Well, welcome to Color Management 101. My name is Angus Patey, and I'm with colormanagement.ca. And I'd like to take you through just the basics of color management today to help you understand and get maybe a better foundation in which you can uh, hopefully begin to learn more and more about color management because it's a very interesting field. And if you're involved in any digital imaging, it's certainly an area which can help you immensely in terms of getting you know better and more consistent output from your devices. So first and foremost, I think the question is, why do we need color management in the first place? Well, I think the reason is, in my opinion, not only do we have so many different digital devices that are available and can be utilized in any type of ad campaign. I mean, think about some ad campaigns. They're going on bus shelters. They're going on floor graphics. They're going on the sides of trucks. They're going on flexo and packaging. They could be going on a coffee cup. They could be going on a, you know, in, in a brochure. There's so many different mediums in with which a single ad campaign can be reproduced. And company needs to keep their brand integrity. They need to keep their color consistent from one device to the next. So color management helps immensely in, in our ability to be able to reconcile those differences. And not only that, there are so, so many less uh, individuals who know how to accurately correct color as there were in the days when we had the scanner operators and real pre-press people. Today, a lot of that content is being passed down and the responsibility is being passed down to the designers who, I mean, not to, to put down designers, but you guys generally aren't pre-press people, but yet you're being asked to do all the work of a pre-press person. So color management can help to ease that responsibility. So as I said, we've got so many different digital devices. We've got digital cameras, monitors, and output devices, and color management helps these devices to talk to each other. So how can a color management help you? Well, it's not going to make your images look better. It's only going to make them look more consistent to each other, to different devices, and hopefully give you some predictability as your, your design or your image moves through various different digital devices. Right? I think color management is, is certainly necessary. As we said, the digital devices are unique. And... Within color management, there's something called an ICC profile. We've all heard of, I'm sure, what it, that an ICC profile is, is a part of the color management um, workflow. But a color management, within color management, the ICC profile's definition would be a way in which it sees and displays and prints color. That's really, in my eyes, what an ICC profile is. But this is a really, really important part of color management that I think if you understand this, you'll help understand a lot about what color management does. So color management helps to and works to reconcile the differences between each device with the least amount of loss. Okay, so let's just say that again. Color management works to reconcile the differences between each device with the least amount of loss. There is going to be loss in the color management translations because we generally start out with large color spaces, such as a digital capture from a camera, and we go to our monitor, which again can hold, say, the whole, a lot of monitors today can show the full Adobe RGB color space, but our output is often on CMYK devices, which have much smaller output color spaces. So there is loss, but we want to reconcile the difference with the least amount of loss, okay? So let's try to understand what an ICC profile is. There's two ways that I look at it and try to define what an ICC profile is. One is it's simply an, an evaluation report of the device. It tells you how it reproduces color. That's a simplistic you know, definition of an ICC profile. The other one is it is similar to the analogy of a language dictionary. And in a language dictionary, we need to have an accurate definition of all the words. In a color space conversion, we need to have two ICC profiles, and each one needs to be an accurate definition of the two devices. The more accurate the definition, the more accurate the translation. Obviously, a language dictionary wouldn't work if it was flawed and had some errors in it. So the same is with the profile and, and making conversions with that. So a profile is very similar to a dictionary. It defines a particular device's color characteristics. Okay? So an ICC profile is similar to a dictionary. We call it a color dictionary. 
And in the color conversion process, we have this extra step. And this extra step happens transparently. It happens in every color conversion. Whenever we start out, we start out with what is called a source uh, profile. And that can be any profile color space. It could be CMYK or RGB. It goes into this LAB color space. Um, in the color management system, it's called, sorry, I clicked there. In the color management system, it's called a PCS, um, a profile connection space. Let's get a click and get back there. Um, the profile connection space is where uh, the image is temporarily stored. In that kind of instantaneous moment that it's stored there, it looks back at the pixels of uh, the source color space and it looks at the definition of the output color space and it tries to reconcile the differences between the two with the least amount of loss. Now there is going to be loss because you go from a large color space to a smaller color space, but it's trying to keep it as accurate as possible, okay? So profile connection space is where that translation happens between the two dictionaries, and it's always in what's called an LAB color space, and it always happens transparently. You don't see it, but it happens in every conversion, okay? So there's lots of different types of profiles out there. Um, we've got input profiles, which are generally, uh, you know, like a camera profile, and they're generally very large uh, color spaces. There can also be scanner profiles. Uh, we've got monitor profiles is another type of profile, and we've got our output profiles, which are generally CMYK, but they can be RGB if you're printing via um, the driver to a, a desktop type printer. A color management system, again, I say it over and over, but it reconciles the differences. The more accurate the profile, the better the translation, okay? So within this conversion process, we've got our input color space, our monitor color space, and then our output color space. So again, there's going to be loss in the conversion, right? So if you have a large color space like Adobe RGB, and you're trying to convert that to a CMYK color space, in this situation it's a Grackle color space, there's going to be a lot of loss in certain areas. If your image has highly mm -hmm. saturated parts to it that are outside the gamut of CMYK, the pro profile connection space has to move those image colors into the destination color space. Now, the way this works is this has zero saturation. As it moves out, it has more saturation or chroma until it hits a maximum of that particular device or color space, okay? So as we make conversions, there are losses that happen from one color space to another, assuming your image has some vibrant colors in it. And if they do, they're never going to fit within the destination color space without some loss. So there's no such thing as a perfect translation in terms of color accuracy. We have to accept that there's going to be some degradation to the saturation of our image when we move from one color space to another. But our eye is very susceptible to hue, shifted, hue shifts. So if that blue that you have moves to purple and desaturates, then we would look at it as a very bad conversion. But if that color from the blue just moves directly in and loses saturation, it doesn't, it isn't as perceived, it isn't perceived as a bad a translation, as if there's a hue shift and it moves one way or another. Okay? So that's important. Another area that's important is that there are often very big differences in the paper white of which your image is printed on. And paper white you can consider as like the fifth color in CMYK or RGB, it could be the fourth because it can play a big part in how your images are reproduced. The color of the paper and the amount of ink that that paper can hold plays a big part in color reproduction, okay? So there's four examples that I give you here. One would be sort of a satin or a gloss type sheet on a press where the blacks are nice and rich and the paper white is nice and you know neutral. An inkjet photo paper, which you have a very blue white paper. And then if you look at the uncoated or the offset type stocks, there's no way you can get a rich black or vibrant color because that particular paper absorbs a lot of ink, right? The opacity of that paper is much higher so that you're having a lot more 
less reflection of the ink and more reflection of the paper itself. And in this situation, you're not only having that, but you're also having to introduce a really yellow paper, which, you know, a newspaper is a big, big factor in trying to do color reproduction and often a big challenge. Okay. When we're comparing colors, there's a term that's called delta E. And delta E is used a lot in color management, and it's helpful to understand what delta E is and how the numbers translate to our perception of color. Okay, so delta E is basically how we numerically determine how close one color match is to another. Okay, because we can't use our subjectivity to say, well, I think it's pretty close. No, I think it's not too close. Everybody would have their own um, definition of what's close enough. So we've defined it more scientifically. And in the world of color, a one delta E or lower is considered a perfect match. There would be no color, a no noticeable color difference to our eye. There'd be a slight measurable one, but we wouldn't be able to see it. But a delta E between three and five, would, we would start to see a visual difference. But in the graphic arts and printing and, and our world of digital imaging, generally a three to a five is an acceptable color match. Some would say it stops at a four, three to a four, you know, is acceptable. But anywhere from two, three, and four, and five-ish is certainly not bad. When you get up into the seven, eights, and nines, and tens, then obviously it is not a match, and most people would reject that as a, an attempt to try and match color. Um, here's just a bit of a visual to show you how, you know, this section in here is a one delta to the difference to that one. And personally, even on my screen, I can't see a difference. I doubt you will in the video. As you start to move up, you start to see that there's obviously a much, much bigger color difference, and a 6 delta is, is certainly very, very noticeable. Okay? So that helps you understand delta E because people use that and throw it around a lot, and understanding delta E is very important. And lastly, we just would like to point out that it's really helpful to have verification images or a couple of ver verification images to help you evaluate your digital reproduction. And if you send the same image to multiple different devices, something like this would certainly help you to assess it more accurately. Um, we use a, a grayscale often to try and show the linearity of the device. Um, we show the, you know, the steps of shadow detail that are available and the highlight detail. Um, general memory colors, um, the vibrant RGB colors that are available, and some of the CMYK ones. Uh, this particular image is geared towards the photo market. We also have a CMYK uh, version that's available. If you'd like, um, you can go to our website, and there, with on the website there's a contact us. We'll be more than happy to send you um, some JPEGs, samples of our verification images that you can use to test your own digital workflow. So feel free to, um, to contact us and we'd be more than happy to send you samples of our color management uh, test images. And, and also I just wanted to thank you for taking the time. I know there's a little bit of a longer um, overview, but uh, hopefully you were able to get some uh, better understanding of color management and how it works. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen. Goodbye.